and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Quality Management and Regulatory Compliance, Staying Competitive with Digital Transformation, presented by BIMSER International. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our two question survey. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools, and support whenever you need it. We've invited Binzer International to present today because they are the industry experts on quality management and regulatory compliance. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick re reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Kevin and Sam. Thank you, Jolie. Now I'm sharing my screen. Yep, it looks great. Great, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you for the introductions. Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Devejoglu. I am with BIMSR International. Uh, we are New York based enterprise software makers since 1998. Today, I am with my colleague, Sam Watt, who is one of our engineers, a software engineer. And together, we'll be talking about digital transformation of quality management. So before we get into quality management and digitization of quality management in the scope of uh, digital transformation, I'd like to talk about who we are and what we're doing uh, in a very brief uh, presentation. We have been uh, a partner of SWK Technologies for a while. Uh, we work very uh, well together and we have very good relationship. Also, uh, this, uh, this quarter we also had a chance to uh, work together in various uh, events together with SWK, uh, and we are looking forward to having many more events together, of course, in addition to this, uh, this webinar. Uh, as a company, uh, as been through International, we believe in simplicity and digital transformation, and we help companies simplify their processes. That's uh, what we do, and that's our uh, mission, basically. And we are uh, ready to be a global leader in global enterprise software marketplace, that's our vision. As a company, we are very active in various uh, business communities. Uh, for example, ASK is one of them, American Society for Quality, and other uh, business and management associations that we follow, so that we are in touch with uh, business communities in different, different regions. Also, we are very close to manufacturing uh, association of uh, HAPAC, and with this association, we basically facilitate events and educational uh, meetings uh, for manufacturers in the New York area. That helps us basically interact with manufacturers in the sense of digital transformation as well as quality management. Uh, I also like to mention our mentorship program uh, for university students. That's very popular in the New York area. So we basically, every quarter, get and new interns from uh, various universities in New York area, and we basically uh, train them and educate them for pre-sales engineering for their careers. Uh, let's talk about our company a little bit. Uh, as Beamster International, uh, we have global presence. We are based in New York, and uh, we are also active in Europe and other regions as well. Uh, in total, we are about 200 uh, people. We are a growing organization. Uh, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development is is investing in BIMSER. They are one of our investors. So with their help and support, we have more visibility in international markets. BIMSER is a ISV of Icometica, uh, Microsoft Gold ISV partner. Also, BIMSER is a certified ASP, SAP ISV partner as well. Also, as, uh, as, a, as an enterprise software maker, we are also very active in Sage and Oracle ERP ecosystems. Uh, speaking of quality management systems, we are also certified. We have ISO 9001 certification as well as ISO 
27.1 certification. So we have certain uh, standard policies and procedures to deliver consistent quality of uh, services and products to our customers through our, our partners. Since 1998, we focus on this product range. Uh, we have EBA. EBA is our enterprise content management platform. It has a powerful workflow of engine to help companies have a paperless work environment. We have been uh, as an asset and maintenance management system. Uh, today, we'll talk more about QDMS. QDMS is our quality, risk, audit, and compliance management system. And finally, we have Ensemble as a business process management solution. Uh, in uh, bottom, you can also see two solutions that we develop on EBA. Uh, one of them is contract management solution that helps companies manage contracts digitally. Another one is EBA ITSM solution that helps IT departments manage their uh, incidents and requests in a digital environment. Our products work standalone. They work on-premise on servers, and uh, when there is a need, they also work together. Uh, since we have a modern technology, when there is a need, we integrate with ERP systems, CRM systems, MES systems, and other uh, systems uh, depends on the project needs. Also, we have mobile apps available for our products. So the main idea is uh, to automate processes of companies. Anything that you do at your organization, repeated tasks, repeated uh, processes, uh, we basically uh, help you automate and digitize those processes so that you can save time, increase uh, productivity, as well as you can comply your quality and management standards uh, easily. That is uh, what we are striving for. Uh, since 1998, uh, these numbers show how many deployments we have done. Uh, and it also shows how many clients we have globally as well. So we have more than a thousand customers globally. And as for QDMS, our quality management system, we have right now we have about uh, a little more, a little more than 1,000 customers, corporate customers globally. Um, since that's the highest number that we have among our products, that also gives us actually a lot of uh, experience that uh, we can talk about. Uh, we have experience in many different industries as to quality management regulations and uh, compliant management standards, and we'll share our insights as well as our observations in the marketplace in a minute. Historically, we are coming from enterprise market, so we have been working with many uh, reputable companies. We are working with 3M, we are working with Ford, Hyundai, Hankel, uh, we are working with uh, Godiva, Chakrit, for example, AstraZeneca is one of our customers, Bitson is using our products as well, International Paper, Unilever, and United Nations are some of our customers. So uh, we, folk, we are coming from enterprise market originally, and right now we are also serving uh, mid-market companies as well. So what does it mean uh, for you? That means our products, uh, they have scale, and you can actually grow with our products. And we have the scale and capability uh, that help you actually grow your business. That's what it means, actually. And we have a lot of experience to help companies grow in a digital environment. Uh, also, I need to mention, we have a lot of uh, references in aerospace and aviation industry, because this is uh, one of the heavily regulated industries in the marketplace. So we work with many different companies. I just put some of them on the screen. Uh, we can uh, we help uh, aerospace and aviation companies comply with many different standards in a digital environment. Another heavily regulated industry is medical device, uh, pharma, uh, and healthcare industry. This is also another uh, uh, regulation-rich uh, vertical, I must say. So we have a lot of uh, references as well in this uh, in this in these verticals as well. So we have uh, many things to talk about in terms of digital quality management. Okay, great. So that's who we are and what we do at Beam3 International. So let's talk about uh, digital transformation of quality management. When we think about quality, basically quality has uh, three main uh, points that we need to always pay attention. One of them is characteristics of the product that speaks directly to the voice of the customer, meaning the product has to stand for something, and that needs to guarantee a certain uh, level of uh, satisfaction for the customers. That is very, very important. Also, uh, quality also reflects the uh, characteristics of the environment that supports the production of the product. Also speaks for the uh, voice of the customer. And another one that we also think about is uh, uh, the improvement of environment that supports the production 
uh, of products also based on the uh, voice of the customer. So these are the basic uh, 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 profile of, of quality. And um, let me uh, think about quality management. I need to share this screen with you. That's very important. That's basically our uh, framework. That's how we look at quality management uh, from practical point of view. So uh, we take quality management into three pieces. So the first piece is quality assurance. Quality assurance is simply the system that you are following. This system may be as simple as or, or as universal as ISO. Could be if you are in aerospace or aviation industry that, that may be AS9100. If you are in food industry, for example, that may be SPF or BRC or ISO 22000, for example. So they, uh, these uh, systems, these quality management systems, dictate a certain uh, system for you to have to run the quality assurance. The other piece that we actually focus on in quality management uh, model is uh, quality control. So quality control is, I call it really company specific. Every single company has different quality control points. Uh, that may be quality control when you buy a purchase order, when you buy a raw material based on your purchase order, when you make a, a, when you make production, for example, you may have quality control processes after production, or you may have quality control processes during production, for example. Uh, this may be also uh, applied to various services that you provide. Typically, quality control is dictated by the quality assurance. So the quality control uh, points that uh, that you have in your company basically talk into quality assurance, uh, the quality management system. Uh, and ideally, that has to be documented and that has to be also traceable and you need to have an audit trail. Uh, and the third piece that we focus on uh, in quality management uh, modeling is uh, predictive quality. So in this digital age right now, uh, we can actually make the uh, most of IoT technologies. So when I say IoT, Internet of Things, I am referring to smart sensors. So with the help of sensors, with the Bluetooth technology, or uh, through or Wi-Fi, for example, uh, and other technologies, you have a chance to remotely monitor your machinery, equipment, and your environment, simply. These uh, monitoring may be as simple as monitoring temperature, monitoring humidity, maybe monitoring uh, smoke, maybe monitoring sound, voice, noise, for example. And you can also monitor for manufacturing purposes. Uh, also, you can monitor um, vibration, for example, or other vitals of a machinery or equipment. Right now, we can do these things uh, remotely. So when I remotely monitor a machinery or equipment, I can know when this uh, machinery will break down when this machine will be in need of uh, care or maintenance, for example. So I can be uh, proactive uh, when I'm running my quality management system. So this is a very important model that we are actually looking at. It. And uh, in a practical sense, we actually um, implement it in different ways. Either uh, we have a quality assurance system in place, maybe ISO 9001, uh, or maybe you are just practicing it, even if you don't have a certification. Uh, you may have a quality control system in place, for example. And the next piece, which is the next level, is the predictive quality with the help of, help of sensors. That's uh, basically how we are um, processing quality management in the scope of digital transformation. There are many different standards in different verticals that affect. So uh, as businesses, we need to comply with various standards. These standards may be quality or management standards, or we may need to uh, comply with certain regulations depends on the industry we have we are in for example but when we look at uh, these lists these are just some of them that we put together for example when we look at aviation industry particularly many aviation or aerospace companies particularly they comply with AS9100 ISO 9001 some of them comply with NIST and other uh, standards that may come with uh, DOD or other uh, regulations that depends on uh, they are serving uh, in different different industries or different institutions, I must say. Uh, automotive industry is also uh, heavily regulated due to health, uh, due to safety reasons. Uh, automotive industry has its own ISO. It's called IATF 16949. So uh, it's also based on ISO 9001. Uh, in addition to ISO 9001, it has automotive industry, car industry focus uh, uh, compliance requirements that you need to follow. In construction industry, we see a lot of ISO 9001 compliance. Also, uh, there's a standard called ISO 17025 that is for calibration 
standard uh, management uh, based on ISO standards. Uh, that's also very common in construction industry. Um, food industry is also heavily regulated. There are different standards in uh, food industry for food companies to uh, comply. Some of them are local regulations that they need to comply, such as checking temperature of refrigerators, uh, industry refrigerators periodically, for example, uh, documentation, hygiene, and other standards. Uh, in North America, we see a lot of HQF standards uh, related compliance. Also, there is BRC. So these are basically uh, generally ISO 9001 based uh, quality management standards. And on top of it, they have uh, certain hygiene uh, and uh, health safety related standards that uh, companies need to, need to follow. Also, uh, we see a lot of uh, GMP uh, compliance as well in food industry. Healthcare industry is also uh, heavily regulated. Uh, when I say healthcare, I'm referring to hospitals, clinics, other uh, health service providers. So typically, HIPAA is very common as a regulation that many companies, healthcare companies, uh, actually they have, to, they have to comply with. Also, FDA regulations are also in place at DC all the time. Manufacturing organizations comply with different standards based on what they uh, manufacture. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the most uh, universal one is ISO 9001, same in North America we have, same in Europe, same in Asia. Uh, it's a very universal uh, quality management system. Uh, in addition to uh, that, there is, for example, ISO 14000 for environment-related quality standards that we can follow, followed by, uh, for example, energy uh, management standards uh, of ISO. Um, ISO 9001 has been around in the market uh, since 1980, so it's been around for a long time. It's a, uh, uh, it's a very well-known system. It's also very universal, so it's a pretty good example to talk about when we are referring to quality management in a digital environment. Uh, medical device industry is also heavily regulated. So uh, there are uh, quality and management standards for medical device companies or medical material manufacturers, for example. For example, if you are manufacturing x-rays or if you are manufacturing um, masks or let's say you manufacture other um, uh, uh, clothing for um, uh, hospitals or healthcare organizations for example you need to you need to comply with ISO 13485 that's an ISO standard designed for medical device medical material uh, industry that's uh, typically what we see uh, and if you are operating in the United States you need to comply with uh, FDA regulations uh, also, if you are selling to, uh, for example, Canada, you need to also comply with uh, uh, SOR regulations of Canada. Uh, there is also uh, EU MDR regulations if you are uh, exporting your medical device uh, products to Europe, for example. And there is also MDSAP as another standard for medical device companies. So these are, uh, that's a heavily regulated industry. So regulation means documentation that you need to follow and the documentation is managing the documentation. And when the time comes for or inspections or audits proving that you are doing your job based on the system that you put in place or based on your quality management system is the challenge. And we'll, that's, that's what we'll be talking about in a minute. Pharmaceutical industry is also heavily regulated with uh, FDA regulations. Public sector has uh, always regulations, maybe a, a local, maybe local, uh, maybe coming from local, uh, uh, local management, maybe state level regulations in place. So, that also involves a lot of documentation, as well as technology industry that we are in, typically uh, ISO 9001, ISO 27001. These are typical standards many technology companies, software companies comply with. Um, also, if you are providing infrastructure, if you are providing, let's say, data centers, a cloud environment, also uh, SAC compliance also is expected in the marketplace. Uh, so SAC has different levels, SAC 1, 2, 3, for example, and these this is also an important um, standard to follow for uh, IT infrastructure service uh, management companies. So let's continue with our uh, slide. So let me look at the uh, quality and management standards that actually help companies um, have uh, best practices. Also, uh, quality and management standards help companies have a framework of certain processes. Uh, so that you can have continu continuous and consistent outcome every time you, you process, you manufacture, or you basically provide a service, for example. Uh, and uh, quality and management standards also help you establish a, uh, an environment for continuous improvement. So let's just remember, any quality management system or um, management standard, 
they uh, these standards basically help you have a continuous improvement. So for us to improve our uh, operations, whether we are making manufacturing, I mean manufacturing, whether I mean service uh, providing, for example, I need to get feedback. The feedback may come from uh, customers, may come from our team members internally, it may come from certain, for example, observations in the marketplace. They may be as simple as a suggestion coming from uh, different sources. So these feedback channels are critical. These are essential for us to manage. Uh, whether you hear it, whether you get it, get it via email, whether you get it, whether you get it in, a, in a letter, that needs to be documented and you need to uh, think about it and you need to take actions to, uh, to make sure uh, you have continuous improvement cultures in your place, in your company, in your workplace, basically. So in that sense, having this uh, continuous improvement culture is very important to follow while following quality and management standards. And they all lead to simply customer satisfaction. Happier the customer, the more sale we can make, the better business we can have, and the better feedback that we get, the more feedback that we get, the better continuous improvement we can actually put in, uh, put in place. So why do we comply with quality management standards? Why, why do you comply with ISO 9001? If you are in food industry, why do you comply with SPF or DRC? If you are in pharma industry, why do you comply with, for example, GMP or FDA regulation? So aside from uh, regulations coming from government, uh, customers are requiring, requiring, actually, they are expecting you to uh, comply with certain quality management standards. It's because ISO, or HQF or AS9100, for example, in aviation or aerospace industry, that means we have certain standards, policies, and procedures in place to deliver goods and services consistently. That's what it means. That's why customers are actually expecting you to have uh, compliance and certification for quality and management standards in place. It also helps, it also helps you have new markets, actually, uh, globally, or just in uh, North America, perhaps. Uh, also, quality management standards help you improve your operations, and you can push your company's company to grow. So, in this sense, when we look at this uh, as a whole, compliance actually directly linked to uh, directly linked to sales. So, in my point of view, compliance equals sales. For us to be able to make sales, I need to comply with certain quality and management standards. If I'm not able to comply AS 9100, even if I'm manufacturing a doorknob for aeroplane, uh, Boeing will not buy from me. Airbus will not buy from me, that's a fact. If I'm not complying with SPF or BRC, I cannot sell it to Walmart. I cannot sell it to Burger King. I mean, these, these are really given. They won't even talk to you, that's a, that's a fact. So uh, basically customers expect you to have this compliance. So the better we comply, the better actually we improve our operations and processes, and the more we increase customer satisfaction, the more sales we can have and we can prosper our business, our employees, and our stakeholders, basically. So that is where it is coming from. So when we say compliance, it's not just documentation. It's not just bureaucracy. It's actually linked to sales. It's actually linked to continuous improvement. It's actually linked to customer satisfaction via uh, feedback that we get from our customers, and we take actions for continuous improvement. So that is, that's how we need to look at it from business point of view, compliance equals sales. Uh, of course, it's not easy to comply with ISO. It's not easy to comply with AS9100. There are challenges because we are busy as business people. We need to also you know, run our businesses. But sometimes some companies, they have a hard time managing the documentation of uh, any quality management system. So too much paperwork is one of the challenges that we have been hearing and seen in the marketplace. Sometimes maintaining documentation and manual work is, uh, is very uh, tedious, maybe really time consuming. Also, when we are so busy with doing, uh, doing manufacturing, doing service providing, uh, consulting, for example, we may lose sight of standards sometimes. That's another challenge. And as I mentioned earlier, some companies look at ISO standard or AS9100 standard or SPS standard and other, other regulations as a necessary evil, which is uh, not the way to go, basically. We need compliance and regulations for continuous improvement and customer satisfaction. That's how we need to look at it. Nevertheless, these are the challenges that we, we have been seeing in the marketplace. So thanks to digital, digital age, uh, right now there are uh, many different solutions that we can actually uh, address these challenges. So with the help of uh, digital 
software products. We can maintain our documentation. We can maintain our uh, SOP, standard operating procedure documentation, policies, procedures, revisions. We can actually manage them digitally. So that actually solves the problem. Also, updates are simplified. Also, audits are simplified thanks to digital age. So it's much easier than before. We don't have to be on paper anymore. Actually, we don't even need paper when I'm running my core management system, for example. So that is that's an important uh, advantage for any company. Um, also, in terms of administrative uh, efforts that we put in, technological tools that we have in this digital age reduces our uh, actual efforts. It makes things easier for us. So we can have our call to manage the system in a digital environment, and we can run it uh, smoothly. So paperless compliance is actually here in this digital age, and we'll talk about it even more detail right now. So one of the solutions that we uh, provide for digital transformation in quality management is called QDMS. That's a quality, risk, audit, and compliance management software that we put together. It's been around since 1998. It is very solid. That's how we actually got uh, more than 1,000 global customers. Uh, and uh, that is how we have been learning about different standards in the marketplace. Um, so when we look at actually a quality management system, if you remember, if I refer to that, uh, that quality management um, a model that I shared with you earlier in terms of in terms of uh, quality assurance, quality control, and uh, predictive quality. Uh, this slide is actually very complementary to that to that model. So, thanks to IoT devices, smart sensors, now I can remotely monitor temperature, vibration, noise, and other uh, vitals of my machine equipment or my environment, for example. So, with the help of IoT devices, now I am able to take action uh, automatically. Uh, manufacturing execution systems that we see all the time at manufacturing organizations based on count, uh, based on uh, manufacturing uh, performance. I can take action to perfect my uh, manufacturing processes, for example, based on uh, manufacturing execution system outcome. Customer relationship management, CRM tools are also very important to get insight in terms of how I am doing as a, as a, as a company and how I can actually improve my processes. That's also very helpful. And I can uh, link QDMS, our system, to any CRM system or MES system or IoT devices to be proactive. This is the key, basically, being proactive uh, in digital age while being paperless and while running all the call to management systems in a, in a, in a digital environment. And uh, finally, there are, of course, ERP systems or account management systems that we have in place. That's also basically linked to uh, our system for HR information, product information, vendor supply information. So uh, this is a very practical uh, approach when you look at it, using IoT devices, manufacturing execution systems, CRMs, ERPs to manage quality and management standards in a digital environment. So our system QDMS is, is running uh, this way to help companies uh, comply with ma various management standards. Uh, QDMS is easy to use, as I mentioned earlier. It's an enterprise level system, but it's very, very easy to use. So you are uh, using what Ford is using. You are using basically what 3M is using in a uh, very simplistic sense, in a very affordable way, also uh, with, with modules that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, it has a web based structure, meaning once you deploy uh, the system, you can access the system anywhere you are. You may access your quality management documentation. You can actually uh, see the reports about your quality control activities, and you can also see the uh, activities, temperature, vibration, other vitals of your machinery and equipment remotely, thanks to IoT IoT devices. Uh, it works on cloud as well as on-premise servers, QDMS, and also uh, it makes it easy to access from anywhere, and it has a modular structure. So. Uh, you don't have to get every every part of the system. You can pick and choose what you need. So many times, many different uh, in many different occasions, I got many different questions. For example, so if you are complying with ISO 9001, uh, typically many companies they uh, use uh, many of our customers they use control backend management module, for example, to manage the uh, policies, procedures, as well as forms, for example. So uh, the challenge about the documents actually uh, are these. So if you put together your policies and procedures on uh, in a word file, for example, in the beginning everything is okay. It's just one uh, 
page or two pages of document and you basically put together and you articulate it how you are doing your job, how you are actually handling customer complaint, how you are handling control, call to control process, how you are doing manufacturing. So you are writing step by step. So it also helps you have a system regardless of who is operating. You have the system right there actually explain how to run it uh, smoothly. So the first time is okay. And then later on, because of the quality, because of the continuous improvement, you have a better way of doing things other way of operating your operations, operating your business. So you need to do a revision in your documentation. So right now I'm doing it this way to my manufacture my software products. Now I have a better way to do it. So I need to write it down. I need to revise my document. So revision after revision, you start to accumulate documents. You start to accumulate documents for policies, for procedures, for forms. Year after year, these documents become unmanageable almost. And you can only keep them on paper or word files, and most of the time you can only access them from certain locations. If you're traveling, if you have multiple locations, it's difficult to access these documentation. So with the help of this uh, system and this, this, this module, you can simply access your documents, policies, procedures, wherever you are. You can read them, you can update them, you can share with your colleagues, you can collaborate. So that is why control document management is important. Writing down and putting together your policies and procedures is the backbone of any quality and management standard. Standard, Whether you are complying with ISO, whether you are complying with FDA, or you are complying with SSAC, if you're in uh, IT, IT, uh, IT industry, you need to put these things together, you need to document it, and you need to be able to trace it, and you need to be able to retrieve it when the time comes for viewing it, reading it, as well as when the time comes for audits, for example, or uh, inspections. As I mentioned earlier, getting uh, feedback from customers are very important. Feedbacks are uh, basically keys uh, that opens the door for us for actually continuous improvement. So one of the ways to get the uh, feedback is customer complaints, or I like to call it customer uh, feedback. And you may have a positive feedback from your customer. That doesn't have to be a complaint, for example. So uh, customer complaint module basically uh, help you record your customer complaints or customer feedback, document it, share it with your team members. And if there's a need, you can take corrective actions or you can take actions. Or the worst case scenario, or at least, you can share what you learn from your customers with your team members. Let's just remember, the idea is to have the continuous improvement. And continuous, continuous improvement comes, uh, comes from feedback, basically. And the more feedback that we get from our customers, and the more corrective actions that we, we basically take, uh, and uh, that basically help us uh, have a higher customer satisfaction, which will reflect on our sales. Uh, corrective action margin is also very important in that sense to document uh, and manage our corrective actions. Audit management is very important. So uh, when we say audit, you can do audit activities internally. You can do audit activities actually also towards your dealers, towards your suppliers, right? So we all have suppliers basically, we buy services and goods from uh, different suppliers, that may be a raw material, that may be just a service. So we may wanna uh, audit, we may wanna evaluate our suppliers sometimes, sometimes or, or periodically. So audit management module is very important. Other common practice that we have been seeing in the market is actually cross auditing. If I'm working for say production department, I may be uh, auditing, let's say purchasing department. I may not be an expert in purchasing, but I may have a fresh idea, I may, be, I, may, I may look at things differently. So I may be a good candidate, candidate of auditing other departments, or, but maybe the other way around, other departments can go audit also manufacturing as well, for, for example. Again, the idea is to find uh, how we are operating, if we are following the policies and procedures based on the feedback that we get from our customers and we put together our policies and procedures, and if there is a way to improve our processes to increase the customer satisfaction. So audit management is very important in that sense. Surveys help us get feedback as well. Training management is also very important to improve a uh, skill set of our, our employees. So uh, with that, basically we can uh, improve our uh, skill set that helps us actually manufacture or uh, provide service, our services to our customers uh, more effectively and help us basically increase our uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, calibration module is basically uh, for uh, companies that have, have uh, 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 machinery equipment, for example, so you can manage the uh, calibration activities of those uh, assets that we have. Um, especially for ISO 9001-2000 uh, uh, 
15 version, uh, risk management became mandatory. It used to be um, optional. So with the uh, mandatory risk management module, uh, risk management uh, compliance, these module is also very, very important that we have. Uh, you can actually uh, manage the uh, risks of your processes, of your health and uh, safety activities, of your environment. So you can also document these uh, as well in a, uh, in a, in a digital, digital environment. So in a nutshell, uh, I talk about uh, Binsuri International, I talk about our company, I also uh, talk about uh, quality as a concept, and I share our quality management uh, framework uh, from the pr practical point of view to be proactive in uh, quality management. And I share information with you about QDMS, our quality risk and compliance management system, that's the tool to help companies manage quality management operations in a digital environment. It's no paper involved. So I hope uh, it was uh, helpful and uh, informative for you. If you have any questions, of course, we will be uh, giving it uh, in uh, coming minutes. Now I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Sam Luck. He's one of our engineers. Uh, he's an expert in uh, QDMS pre-sales operations. So I'd like him to show us a little bit of QDMS, how we are running quality management operations in a digital environment with no need of papers. And, uh, and I will take it, uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. So um, I want to make sure, uh, can you see my screen? Like, yes. Okay, nice. Thank you. And thank you, Kevin, for the um, presentation of uh, our company and also the QDMS which is our quality risk audit and compliance management system. And it, this is how it looks like after you log into QDMS. And you can find after deploying QDMS on your on-premise server or on your cloud server. I can connect to QDMS by using my web browser. And I'm now using my, uh, I'm using uh, Firefox and which allows you to connect to QDMS anytime and anywhere. Okay. And after logging in to QDMS, you can find all your uh, panel tasks and also the request for approval on this home screen right after you log into QDMS. And you can get a quick connection to those requests, like a document that you have saved as draft and also um, the corrective action, which are waiting for your approval, and so on on this home screen. And it's make sure you won't miss any request or task in QDMS in this management system. Other than that, you will also uh, receive a notification in your email inbox. And on your top left, under this integrated management system, you can see the menu of QDMS, which shows all the available modules in your, uh, in your quality management system. Okay, excuse me. Okay, like a uh, control document management system, complaint uh, management system, corrective action, and so on right in this main menu. And QDMS, uh, as Kevin mentioned, it is modular. So you will see um, the module that you have in the system in this menu. So let us go to um, the control document management module. In this module, you can read your document, of course, and also create a new document, which means uploading a new document to the system. Revise a document, like getting a new version for your document that is or all existing in the system. Okay delete the document. And after deploying QDMS, you don't need any other software to read the contents of your document. And instead, the contents of your document will be shown in the built-in browser of QDMS. And QDMS support different file types like uh, specification, procedure, regulation, training materials and so on in different file formats like um, Word, Excel, 
PowerPoint, uh, PDF, image, video, audio, or um, uh, cat, and so on. Those will be shown in this built-in browser, which you can zoom in and out. And all the activities that you interact with this document will be recorded in the log of QDMS. For example, like your uh, the username, the time, and the date, and what kind of activities that is carried out in the system. Okay. In addition, you can add a new document to QDMS. And first of all, you can choose the folder that you want to have your new document sitting on the left. So let's say I will put this under right here and click the next step. And after that, you can manage the permission matrix, which means which user has the permission on reading, printing, revising getting back to the previous version and delete the document. And also you can manage the matrix like uh, the distribution list, which means who or which users have the obligation to read this document. When it is new, uh, newly uploaded to the system or when it is revised. Also, you can manage the approval flow, which means what approval flow this new document will be put in when it is uploaded to the system. Okay, and you can add any um, user that is recorded in the system. For example, I'm going to add Kevin into this approval flow. Okay, and simply add it, and you can add a single user or add the users in a group. And you can find the level on your right, which means as small as uh, smaller the number is, and it is higher in the um, approval layer. In this example, after I send this request into this approval flow, no. this request will be sent to Kevin first. And then after Kevin approval, it will send to my account, Simpson International, which I'm logging in as. Okay. And now you can upload your document from your local drive under this document tape. You can choose right here and browse from your local drive and upload the document right here. Okay. And you will see a notification or a message saying the file uploaded successfully. After that, and also all the information of this new document is entered, like the document code, document name, and by the way, every few names with the asterisk symbol, it is a uh, mandatory field that you have to uh, enter something in this field, okay? And then you can send your request and it will go to Kevin for the first approval and then this it will be sent to my account for an other approval. Okay. And now we come to the complaints module. And in this module, you can retrieve your feedback internally and externally, like internally from your uh, colleague, uh, coworker, supervisor, and so on. And externally, like uh, from your vendor, supplier, or subcontractor. So that um, let me get one in as an example, like in the external custom complaint. And it's QDMS will show you all the complaints records that you have in the system, and they're in different status depending on the progress that you're handling this particular complaint. Uh, they will be like in the build, open, or uh, final, and so on. So let us get into one, like um, the one in the final status. And of course, you can uh, create a new complaint in this module. And after creating a new complaint uh, record in the system, like uh, entering the description of the complaint and the detail of it and the complaint category, 
then you can assign a responsible team to take care of this complaint, okay? And attach all the documents that provide or that support to this complaint, like some uh, image, for example, like photos of it, or like um, a voice recording, for example. And after that, the responsible team has to file the first progress report if it is needed, like uh, confirming this complaint. And then this responsible team has to file the final report for uh, against this particular complaint. And if there's no other follow-up action is needed right here under this follow-up page, then you can close this complaint. And these records will be saved into uh, into the archive of QDMS. And in every module, we have the reporting tool that allows you to create a report or the way they make the reports in different modules. For example, like I can have a graphic report in the complaints module, which QDMS will lead us to another page, uh, another page. So you can set some filter on your left or condition to this report. Like I want to see uh, which customer filed the most complaints or filed the most records in this complaint module. Then we can set up the time frame. Like I'm going to have an any report. Then draw the graph. And you can tell which customer filed the most complaints from this bar chart. Like, and also it will show you the data in the table. And anytime you can export this report as Excel, PDF, or image for sharing with any responsible parties. Okay. Then we come to the corrective action modules. <coughs> corrective action module. So right here, Again, we can retrieve all the all the uh, records that we have in this corrective action module, and they're in different status like result, revealed, opened, or follow up, and so on. And it depends on the progress that we're handling, or our team uh, handle this particular record. And saying, uh, let me pull out one of the records. And you can create a new record in this corrective action, in this corrective action module. And what you have to enter is like um, the corrective action um, source, the category, and uh, the non-conformity detail. And after that, you can assign this corrective action to a particular solution team, a responsible team. Like you can choose the leader, responsible department and the team member of this solution team and upload the document or uh, photo under this attachment team. And this team then has to file the first progress report, like uh, finding out uh, what is happening and uh, is this uh, record is accurate. After that, they have to do the request analyze and carry out certain action in order to cope with this uh, non conformity. Okay, and if there's no other follow up action is needed, then we can close the case in this module. And one more thing I want to share with you is this corrective action module is integrated with complaint module, which means if you have a complaint in, or a new record in complaint module, and then uh, while you're handling that complaint, you can carry out certain corrective action, and that um, new record will be shown in this corrective action module as well. And then we come to action management module, which allows you to have your action planning. And in this example, you can find like um, I have just a lot, um, several action planning in the system. And for example, like the new employee action planning. And after defining the action planning, like new employee action planning, you might have served up 
couple of the action items in this planning. Considering like this action planning is the goal that you want to achieve. And the action item is how you get uh, some objective that helped you to achieve the goal. Okay. So, and you can define your sub action as long as the action item right here for this action planning. And you can add a new action item or sub action in the system, which allows you to enter the responsible person and also the action performer. In addition, you can define the start date and end date and the detail, detail of this sub action. Okay. And after uh, saving this sub action, the action performer and the responsible person will receive a notification in QDMS and also in the email inbox. Okay. And next, we come to the training planning module. And right here, it's similar to the action planning module, which allows you to carry out or define the, HR, the training plan in this module. And as you can see, I have different uh, action plans on in the system. And also, we can, you can define the date. Since you want to carry out different uh, training to different users or employee in your company. So let's say uh, you can define a new 2020 QDMS training plan and then create the item for this training plan. And you can invite different um, trainee to this training in different um, time frame. And you can also record um, the attendance and also the score of this training, of your trainee. Then you can have, you can see the audit module right here, and you can create the audit planning. So for example, like uh, an internal audit planning, and again, you, uh, you will, audit different um, auditee in this planning, like internal audit planning, and you will audit the employee in, for example, like manufacturing uh, department or logistics department, so that you can create the audit item right here and the different audit planning and invite the auditor and auditee under this audit planning. And also define the, of course, the, the audit date and audit time. One more thing is you can also add the question as a reference for the auditor. So saying, I'm now uh, auditing um, the employee in logistic department. And in fact, I'm uh, the manager in manufacturing department so that you can set up some questions as a reference for the auditor. And he or she can get the idea what kind of question um, that ha have to be asked or that have to ask the auditee in that audit, okay? And there are more modules that, is, uh, that are available in QMS. But I will say it's come to the end of my demonstration, and thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sam. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into your question section of GoToWebinar. We'll give that a minute in case any come through. Also, just a reminder to everyone, we do have subject matter experts here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time.
All right. Well, I'm not seeing any come through. So thank you so much, Kevin and Sam, for your time today and for your very informative presentation.